If you hear anything, it's Casca. She's uh, playing with a toy, and she has a... Um, it's a Kong toy. I don't know if you guys have ever heard them. She has a uh, peanut butter snack in it, and right now she's trying to get it out. So if you hear anything, it's her. But okay, anyways, with that out of the way, it's been a bit. I didn't review last week's chapter of Ties Eye, and I know many were worried that I dropped the series. I mean, it's logical, it's understandable, because, I mean... People would obviously worry when I don't put up a review for something usually it might mean I'm done with it and that's not the case I've been with Ty's eyes since chapter 72 71 somewhere around there. It's been years. I've been with Ty's eye like I think I've been with Ty's eyes since 2014 Maybe so it's it's been a while. I don't think I'm gonna drop this series just because I don't review one chapter of Ty's eyes So just I wanted to clarify and you're awfully uh, noisy, aren't you? Oh, you got it out. You got it out good girl but okay, anyways, basically, I decided not to really do last week's chapter because I ran out of time, I was busy, and so I just decided, you know what, let's just do this week's chapter. But overall, my thoughts, just brief thoughts on last week's chapter, it's to be expected. Merlin is broken as hell, and I mean, I guess we should have all expected the outcome. The only thing I'm a little bit upset with when it comes to last week's chapter is the fact that it just felt too easy. I felt like someone like Chandler and Cusack would put more of a fight up against Merlin, even though Merlin is broken. It just it felt, I don't know, it just felt too easy, and I was just a little bit disappointed. Now, anyways, with that out of the way, this chapter of Ty's Eye, Center. That is a really good design. I just want to take a few moments to appreciate the, the design, the quality of the center's design. Like, Nakaba Sensei, he did a freaking good job. But there's one thing Nakaba Sensei's always been good with. It's always designing monsters and stuff. Ever since, like, the early stages of Taizai, monsters always have looked really cool and unique, and I could just see Nakaba Sensei has not lost that touch. When you see how Sinner looks, his entire design with the flames coming out of his head and all that, it looks really cool. Definitely something that suits for something that would be called the original demon. Now, let's get into those details. So, Kusak and Chandler were at one point in time one soul, which this is what I talked about literally two weeks ago before I skipped last week. I talked about that's what it looked like to me. The way their dialogue was and all of that, it looked like, you know, Kusak and Chandler could have potentially have been one person or they were going to fuse and they could have potentially been the brothers of the Demon King. It seems like I wasn't really that far off from the truth with this chapter because, I mean, Kusak and Chandler, they did fuse together. But they're not necessarily brothers to the Demon King, but they were created by the Demon King. And so in some ways you could say that they're the um, the son, or you know, they're the offspring of the Demon King itself since he did create them. But leaving that to the side for now though, Kusak and Chandler have effectively become the center. Now, apparently the reason why they were split up in the first place was because in the past when the Demon King created the original demon, aka the center, he was so strong that he got, you know, I guess, prideful. He thought that he could uh, beat the Demon King. He rebelled against the Demon King, and eventually he was defeated. And his punishment, the Demon King forced him to split into two. He split his soul completely in the half, which was Kusak and Chandler. And he told these individuals for the rest of their days to watch over his two sons, Zeldris and Asterosa, and have it to where these two individuals, you know, could potentially be the next Demon King. That's what you know, the Demon King ordered the original demon to do. And so they were forced to be split apart. Now, in this chapter, they come together and they fuse. Now, if we go by what was established in this chapter, the reason why they split up was because th their punishment. And the Demon King didn't want them together. He wanted, you know, them to raise his sons. And looking at the ending part of this chapter, they've always had the means of fusing together again. What stopped him? I mean, yes, punishment. But, I mean, it seemed like they always had the power to begin with the fuse, so what really stopped them? That's what I'm kind of curious about. See, there wasn't a lot of details clarifying what really happened to Kusak and Chandler, like their original form. We didn't really get anything clarified of how they got split. Like, we know their soul was split apart, but we don't know what condition it was. Like, for instance, you know, 
what the Demon King did to split them apart and how he forced them to where they couldn't actually just go back together and instantly rebel. Uh, that's what I'm a little bit curious about because they instantly go back together in this chapter and it just looks like they've always had the means to do that and I'm just like, why? Like, why would you allow them to have the means to do that if their punishment is to be a part in the first place? Unless there's something else I'm not realizing. But regardless of all of that, though... If I had to assume anything, the reason why they're able to now, though, why they're able to go back into the same body, is probably because their role as watching over, you know, you know, the Demon King's two sons is over. Because, see, Meliodas, he's literally forming into the next Demon King, and Zeldris is pretty much giving up the title of being the next Demon King to his brother, so obviously their role is watching over the two sons... It's over. They, they could finally go to their true form. But there also could be another reason as well. When you look at the dialogue that Cusack and Chandler had in this chapter and, like, the previous chapters, it seems like when they were talking to Zeldris and when, when, you know, Chandler was looking up at Meliodas, the way he talked about it like that, it seemed like he was saying his final goodbyes. Yes, Cusack and Chandler fused into one, but it still does not change the fact that even though they were split, they're technically still the same person. Like, okay, they should have the emotions and memories of both of them into one, so they technically should still kind of in some way still be slightly the same person. But it seemed like the way they put it, it's like they were truly saying goodbye to Zeldris and Meliodas, which I'm just like, why? Why would you act like you're saying goodbye? So my only theory is now I have is that this center form is only for, you know, a, a temporary measure. It, it's not something that can be used for long periods of time. What I mean by that is, is that because of their actions of what, you know, Kusak and Chandler just did, they are going to die. We can think of this form most likely as the Indra form. See, as we know, Indra form, it's basically a sentence of death. Like, once you go there, it's over. You're done. And I feel like that's could that could be what this is. Like, for instance, when they finally got back in this form and they accessed it again because of their punishment and all that, when they do access it, they will die. And maybe that's the reason why they never did it in the first place, because they knew if they did, they would die. So, they finally did it because they realized that there's no nothing left to really teach, you know, Zelorus or Meliodas, so they're willing to give up their lives to protect, you know, their new king. That's what I'm assuming. I could be wrong, but that's just the way the chapter looked to me. Now, speaking of everything else, let's talk about the situation where Mel's identity is finally revealed. Everybody remembers him, and we get to see everybody's reactions to it. So, there's a lot of details revealed. Number one, I don't know if it's ever been revealed before, but Merlin states within this chapter that her master was Galther. So... Okay, I mean, I, I, if this has been mentioned before, you can clarify in the comments. Well, I know Merlin has a master and all that, but I, I've never, I didn't think it was Galther. I don't know, just something about that didn't ever click in my head, and I don't know if it's ever been mentioned, but yeah, that, that was interesting for this chapter. And then also on top of that, seeing Zeldris' reaction to finding out that Esterosa truly wasn't his brother. That, that caught me. Because I'm like, I sense some lies here. Let me explain. Zelda states, like, I'm relieved. I never once looked up to my brother, Esterosa. That's what he says. I'm very relieved. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you're a liar. You're, you're, you're a liar. Like, yeah, the way you're acting is like you don't care about Esterosa at all. But it's very obvious you did. Do you, does anyone remember what he did in the past when Askinor gave that, you know, supreme beatdown? To Esterosa, he beat that man back, and, you know, he was uh, on Cruel Sun being knocked back, and he was about to die. And then you see Zeldris charge in, and he jumps in front of Esterosa to save him. For a man that says he didn't care about Esterosa at all to say that, and then do that action, there's some lies going on here. So, either Nagama Sensei is just wanting to disregard that fact, or Zeldris is a dirty liar. Well, one or the other, but we'll, we'll see where that one goes. But okay, with that out of the way, we also know that Rudisil is in no condition to fight. With the, everything that just happened, with him now remembering his brother still alive and everything, he's under a state of shock. He can't really do anything right now, so I feel like Rudisil's kind of like, he done for now. He's not doing anything. Like, I feel like the man's just mind broken at this point, and he really has nothing to say, and he doesn't really have any way to react to the entire situation. So it's probably going to be left up to Merlin and, you know, Escanor to probably decide this fight, unless Bond arrives. Which, by the way, Bond did arrive in this chapter, which, thank God. Like, thank God. Like, I, I'm, I love Bond. 
Everybody knows that, and I'm glad to have Bond back, and I'm glad he's finally back out of purgatory. Let's see what strength this man actually has. But okay. Now, the main thing I do want to talk about, though, is what Merlin said. She said, with the center now coming back, she's like, all chances of victory is now lost. And I call bullcrap. Uh-uh-uh. <laughs> that, that's a lie, Merlin. You're a, you're a liar. You're a dirty liar. You want to know why? Think about what you did last chapter. Kusak and Chandler were basically stated to have no weaknesses. But Merlin, using her magic, she reduced their resistances down. Slowly. But it happened. Yes, setup needed to be done, but their resistances got reduced, and she beat them both. So think about it like this. She says that it's impossible to win now. That's a lie. Because Merlin, if you just use the same magic against him, he's going to lose. That's what's going to happen. So I'm just like, uh, that's what bugs me. That's what really bugs me is that Merlin is so hacks now that, the, you know, just hearing her say those type of lines, it really irks me because it's lies. We, we saw Merlin handle Kusak and Chandler when it's very obvious that she can handle them and what she did with the description that was given about what she did. She can handle the center. Yeah, she might not be able to just straight up demolish him like, you know, the one Escanor might be able to do. But with her magic, she can reduce the man's resistances down basically to zero and then win. So, yeah, I just, I feel like, <sighs> I, I, I just, I don't like that part of this chapter. I really don't. I'm not a big fan of it. I do hope that, you know, maybe that was a mistranslation. I really hope so, because it just doesn't go with what the last chapter stated about Merlin. It's just like building up the hype of the center, and that's all it's really about. But okay, with that being said, I think Escanor is about to have to fight, at least until Bon arrives, because Escanor now has his, uh, his son back in his hands. He's got a sacred treasure, which buffed him back up. Obviously, he's not in the one mode, but I do believe that if you know, everything's still going, you know, the proper way with Merlin's powers and how it works, then Merlin's probably going to use that, her ability infinity, probably to make Dora Escanor continuously, you know, gain strength, and he's probably going to go into the one mode, something like that, but we'll see where it goes. But I think that's about it when it comes to this chapter of Ty's Eye. Let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about everything that happened? How do you feel about Bond arriving? Do you think he's going to get there in time before anything really bad happens? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, I love you guys. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.